Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. As we reported last week, Sunday, June 16th marked the last day of coal-fired electricity in Alberta. It was something that many said couldn't be done. But Alberta has gone from 80% to 0% coal and completed it six years early. It was the NDP government of Rachel Notley back in 2015 that set the goal of phasing out coal and achieving 30% renewable energy by 2030. Alberta's current government goals are hard to nail down, except for the one long-term goal of reaching carbon neutrality by 2050, which for perspective is about five government terms from now. Coal in Alberta was replaced by natural gas-fired power plants and a fair amount of solar and wind power. Um, So with the shift to gas, um, I guess we've got both a greenhouse gas emissions challenge where we've still got you know, 60%-ish of the emissions that we would have had with coal, uh, but now we got them coming from gas. So we've got to figure out how to, how, to, how, to, how to deal with that problem. But we've also got an affordability problem where we are locking in to gas, which is, um, depending on the analysis you're looking at, either just cost competitive with wind and solar or not cost competitive with wind and solar. And then you start layering on, uh, CCS in order to deal with its emissions, and your, 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 your cost challenges get even worse. That's Scott McDougall, the Director of Electricity Policy for the Pembina Institute. Carbon capture and storage was supposed to reduce those emissions, but Capital Power recently cancelled a $2.4 billion project at its Genesee plant. We've, we've got the know-how, but I guess around... Um, electricity CCS in particular, there's also a competitiveness angle that I think gets missed a lot of the time. Uh, When you look at the costs of different types of electricity generation, wind and solar just continue to come out at the lowest cost options for generation. And that's even with uh, like a good degree of storage uh, integrated into their, their business cases. It's very difficult for gas-fired CCS to, to be cost competitive with you know, wind and solar with storage. Up to a certain point, adding more renewable energy plus energy storage is the most affordable way to reduce emissions. We found that round about 45 to 58% uh, renewables on the Alberta grid uh, was achievable and feasible um, by uh, 2035 and that's from a reliability perspective and it was we were a little bit surprised that it uh, led to lower overall costs uh, for electricity for uh, homeowners as well. A surprise for many, Alberta's grid is already capable of producing 30% of our electricity from renewable energy. McDougall is saying we can get close to 60% of our electricity from renewable energy pretty easily, just as Germany is already doing. And also, um, I mean, another configuration element that's pretty important is expanding uh, transmission interties with neighboring provinces in the U.S., uh, I mean, doing this kind of work really increases the reliability uh, of the grid, uh, as well as the ability to, you know, market surplus wind and solar when you've got it, you know, import uh, electricity, especially from a neighboring hydro province like BC, um, when you need it. So, Alberta can reduce and eventually eliminate emissions from electricity, but it still needs better transmission interties and new electricity regulations and policies to enable energy storage, smart grid technologies, and even energy efficiency. The previous goals of phasing out coal and reaching 30% renewable energy have been met, but the future is very uncertain in Alberta. Investment in renewable energy has taken a nosedive since Alberta lifted its moratorium and imposed onerous new rules on the industry. Subscribe to our podcast at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.